Nein. Ah, das, nein, das weiß ich. Nein. Hallo. Hi. I, I just noticed you. I was. I know it sounds really random. You probably get this all the time. But um, I just noticed you from down the stairs, and I. I had to say you are absolutely stunning. <laughs> Thank and you. And I would regret Thank it you. not walking up to you and starting a conversation. I'm Alex, by the way. Sheena. Hey, Sheena. Yeah. What are you doing on this lovely day, Sheena? What are you, what are you taking um, for this for? The opera house. Really? Yeah. Are you, are you a terrorist or something? <laughs> Tourist. Oh, you're tourist. a tourist. High five, not a terrorist. We don't want you taking pictures of our national no. heritage. You know, you want to be blowing anything up. But, uh... yeah, you're traveling with my friends. <laughs> oh, really? Because no. I love to be mine. Yeah, I, no, I, I'm not going to cameras, right? I can't run in these shoes anyway. But, uh, pretty funky. Pretty funky. I like that. Yeah. I'm, I'm like a man on a mission today. I'm out just to meet some new people and... I don't know, so you, you come you down to the opera house often picking up tourists? Oh, I didn't really pick up at all. I just talk and that's it. Okay. Know, um, I think you're thinking too forward in our, our relationship <laughs> already. But um, <laughs> what's the story? What are you doing today? Um, yeah, just looking around Sydney. Um, I've been here for about two weeks. I oh, yeah. haven't actually seen the opera house, so oh, really? I come down. Yeah, my friends uh, went out, had a big night last night. Really? So, yeah, I'm out on my own today. Where are you from? Uh, Canada. Canada. Yeah. Where about to Canada? Vancouver. Really? I live in Vancouver. Yeah. I had a crazy Canadian flatmate who used to live with me. She was, um, she was pretty nuts, but <laughs> <laughs> she was cool. Um, we're not all crazy. I uh, know, no. She, um, <laughs> she, started, she gave me a call, and it was 2 o'clock in the afternoon, and I was back at the flat, and she says, uh, she goes, hey, Alex, Alex, you know, you gotta, you got to save me, you got to rescue me. I'm like, uh, wh wh where are you? What's wrong? She goes, well, I'm at the art gallery, and I had a big night last night, and I took some acid, and I'm walking around, and I don't know how I got here, and I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> and I, went, I, I drove down there, I picked her up, and basically, yeah, she was just wandering around, she had no idea how she got there, and... I, uh, yeah, I really looked after that. Are you still friends then? Oh, well, she went back to um, Toronto, so uh, okay. I haven't been in contact with well, her. we're not on like that. <laughs> no, you're not? Awesome, respect. <laughs> respect, way to go. <laughs> oh, oh you're, you're a tourist, are you? Yes. Oh, awesome. Um, so, yeah. uh, do you mind? Or? I'm staying at a, a backpacker hostel in Bondi. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Okay, it's nice, nice photos here. That's interesting. And what are you up to today aside from? Oh, there's, there's some markets around. I'm just looking to uh, just buy some stuff, that's all, you know. Yeah. Um, buy some stuff. Do you see me as your back? Do you want, do you want to take a picture of you or something? Or? Yeah, for sure. Okay. Thank you. That's oh. great. That's all right, honey. <laughs> hey, guys, stop there. That, that's good. Get okay. the uh, opera house in the background and the bridge. <laughs> all right, I'll, I'll, take, I'll take one more. I'll take a sexy picture, okay? Okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Bye. That is sexy. <laughs> that is sexy. <laughs> So how, how long are you here for before you go back? Um, well, probably another month or so, and then we go to Asia, and we're doing Asia for two months, and then probably come back and work for a bit, and then go back to Canada. Really? We're yeah. back in Asia. I just, um, I just came back from Hong Kong. I loved it there. It's great. Thailand, Laos, Cambodia, mm -hmm. um, hopefully Vietnam if we have enough time, but getting from like one side of Vietnam to the other is, well, we're traveling, we're budget travelers, so on a bus it's like almost 50 hours. So hopefully we can make it, but... Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Vietnam would be an I, um, experience. Are you going to check out the moon party in Thailand? Um, I don't, I'm not really the big partier of the group. My oh, friends really? are, so, okay. yeah. You know you should do? If you're um, if you're adventurous, are you adventurous? Um, I like I like to think I'm adventurous. Okay, I don't alrighty. So we know if I am. There's um, you probably heard of the tiki tours. Yes. Okay. Yep. All right. A friend of mine went on there recently, and they have the tiki tours in Europe. Mm -hmm. And uh, she travelled uh, around France and Germany and all that kind of stuff, and she had the most fun time ever. My girlfriend actually did a tiki tour as well. She mm -hmm. did the best time. Yeah. Yeah. I think just you know, same age people just walking around and. Good way to meet people, and so I guess the same with backpacking and staying in hostels and that. Yeah. Yeah, it's a good way to meet people. <laughs> Network, I guess. Um, I met. Oh, I was out a couple of nights ago, and I met this um, this this, this, this uh, couple in the bar, and they, they shared a room with another couple. So there's just two couples in one room, <laughs> and which is a bit bizarre. But um, they were they were saying that uh, the other couple at night they would you know, you know that kind of stuff. And <laughs> They just, I, I'm thinking, no, have no shame, you know, like, it's, it's a hostel, for God's it's sake, you know. pretty typical for a hostel. You reckon? Yeah, I do, actually. I stayed in a hostel once, and that's it. I've never gone back. Where did you stay? I, it was in Adelaide, and I stayed in a hostel there, yeah. 
I, uh, I, was, I was budget travelling, I, I, I went over, I travelled down there for work and it turned out that um, I, my, my hotel was overbooked and they, they said we can't okay. take you and I said okay and there was a hostel opposite the, uh, the opposite side of the road and I thought awesome. So I went in there and basically I, sh I shared a room with uh, 15 other people. Like you had bunk beds. Yeah, bunk beds. I felt like it was on a, a, you know, a ship or something, you know, like they had the galleys, you know, I was sitting down the galleys. But, uh, it was really cool. I really enjoyed it. But yeah. like you said, you know, you meet really cool people. You do. Very transient sort of lifestyle, but yeah, yeah it can be fun. It's, it is what it is. So yeah. yeah. You know, you remind me of this uh, girl named Susan. She's actually from Canada as well. Mm -hmm. I, um... I actually studied accounting and law in, uh, in Toronto, and uh, she was in my class. She was actually sat two desks, two rows in front of me, and I had the biggest crush on her ever. Like. <laughs> the, the, the thing is, I never actually got a chance to speak to her because I had this big ass Dell computer, and by the time I folded it away and put it in my, in my bag, she was already gone out of the room. So I never had a, I never had a chance to talk to her. It was, it was actually year end. This is this this is this happens two years ago. It was year end, and we had the exams, and I I finished early, and I had these tech books, and I paid like something like 100 bucks, but I was going to sell to the class for 50 bucks. So I sent an email to the entire class, and I said, Hey guys, I've got some textbooks, some for 50 bucks, some for 100. Haven't even opened them yet. Like this sort of packaging, I just basically I, I'm a fast reader, and I I've got mega memory, so I just learn everything pretty quickly. And she emailed me. She goes, hey, Alex, I, um, I noticed you in class, and it's a pity we never actually got a chance to talk. And I got this feeling, like if someone just kicked, you know, kicked me in the stomach, like, wow. She was there. She always, like, she probably liked me, and I never got a chance to uh, have a conversation with her. So I emailed her back, said, listen, I'm only here for two days. I'm going to go back to Australia. But um, I think we should just catch up for coffee, you know. I can only guarantee you uh, interesting conversation. That's it. So we, we set up a date, and it was actually it was my last it was my last day for exams. Mm -hmm. And we I, I had a dare. The dare was I can't remember what it was, but I lost it. I had a dare with one of the um the one of, I was I was a vice captain for the, the, the football team at the uni on campus. And I, I lost the dare and the dare was uh, the loser would have to go to a costume shop on the corner of Burke and uh, Vale and we had to rent a Superman costume and wear it to the uh, you know, the exams. <laughs> and I thought this is, I lost it and I thought, damn, you know, it's, it's only a small costume shop, so they, they probably even have a Superman costume. But I walked in and uh, they, they said, no, we're, we're sold out, we only have one, someone rented it last night for a theme party. <laughs> so as I was walking out, what do you know, a guy walks in, the same build as me, same height, holding a huge Superman <laughs> costume, and I was like, oh my god, you know, so... Turns out it, was, it actually looked as though it was made for me, it fitted me perfectly, so I had to wear it. So there's me walking, it was freezing as well, it was, it was snowing outside. I was walking in the snow, wearing a Superman costume, a red cape, a big S here, to class. And I got, I got to the exams, and there was this, this door, this, this, you know, what we call the door bitch, and they take the name Danes and making sure everybody attends the exam and all that kind of stuff. And she's like, I can't let you in. I said, So why? She goes, you dressed as Superman. I can't let you in. I'm like, I looked it up. Absolute conviction. I said, I am Superman. And before she realized, like, Superman's a fictitious character, I was in class. I ran in class. I sat down. Everyone turned to me and just laughed their heads off. <laughs> and, um, and I, uh, I was doing the exams, doing the exam, I was, and I had to go to the bathroom, so I excused myself, and I, I went to the bathroom, and I couldn't even open the Superman costume to go to the toilet, and the exam was finishing in like 15 minutes, I went back in, and I was crouching over the desk like this, scribbling as many answers as I possibly can on the exam paper, and um, I got the best exam results I've ever got in any exam. Really? So maybe that helps. Maybe you should wear a Superman costume to every exam that you do that. Maybe I should. <laughs> And I had a date with her as well. I, um, I was going to meet her at the spa, um, a couple of blocks away from the uni campus, and uh, I walked in. I was, I, was, I was nearly there. I didn't have time to go home and change. And I walked in the bar, and basically there's me, a Superman costume with a red cape, and she looks at me and she goes, you lost the dare, didn't you? <laughs> I, um, I, mean, I still keep in contact with her. She's a really cool gal. But, um, she's from Canada. She's from Toronto. She's from Canada, yeah. What university were you studying? Oh, I can't remember now. I was only there for about... Three months. Ah, uh, okay. So, so still a semester there. Exactly. Yeah, but uh, cool. really enjoyed it. It was yeah. great. It's a great country. It's a yeah. beautiful country. What's your story? You how do you keep yourself busy? Um.
um, well, right now, backpacking. Normally, um, I sort of in office. Yeah, I'm pretty boring. <laughs> Filing papers. You, you could have lied to me. You could have said, you know, you're... Uh, I'm sure I could have. I'm really bad at lying. Oh, yeah. Might as well tell the truth. Um, you can tell when somebody's lying. Have you ever heard about that? Or? It's in the eyes or something? Yeah. Yeah. Apparently, there's, there's two, like, spheres of the brain. There's, like, the... I think the left one is the emotional and the right to logic. So, if somebody's lying, if they look up and to the left, that means they're accessing the emotional side, which means they're being creative and they're making up stuff. Oh, I didn't know that. I think they look right. They're accessing the logical side, which means they're recalling from memory. So, if somebody... So which way do they actually look when I started talking? Oh, I can't tell. I, didn't, I, didn't, I, didn't, I should really pay more attention. You can look at the, the pupils, if they dilate and if they sweat, or whether they see ums and ahs, or... Yeah. Call it ums and ahs, brain farts, mm. you know, it's like, oh, what do I say now, you know, yeah. so... Yeah. Do you work in an office? That's not I work in an office um, because I haven't actually figured out what I want to do with the rest of my life. So. You should be a rapper. Um, okay. No, why? <laughs> <laughs> Where did that come from? I don't know. <laughs> I, um, no, I don't know. Join the circus? Uh, travel the world? I don't know. I want to join the circus. You should, well, for fun, you know. Just, just to say I, I joined the circus. <laughs> I couldn't do the, the trapeze thing in the... <laughs> oh, you don't have... Well, yeah, I suppose so. You can just be one of those clowns and walk around and squirt water at people. <laughs> um, no, I feel pressure for my family to be a practical human being, so just office job for right now, and yeah, yeah we'll see where it takes me. Interesting. My big trip. And what did you want to be when you were a little, like, little, little kid? And don't, don't say princess. Um, no, I actually wanted to be a fireman. Are you serious? I really did. High five. Way to go. Um, <laughs> And then I grew up and realized I was really short and really tiny, so that was never going to happen. But yeah. when you're little, you have to... So you dress up in a little fireman hat, <laughs> fireman coat, and wax, yeah, running around. <laughs> you hitting the dining room table with it. And I don't know where it came from because I grew up around all women, so... Yeah. Yeah, but that was That's my a dream. little strange. Yeah. <laughs> I, I've got a feeling I want to sort of like stay here, but also half me want to like run away, you know? So. Mm. What do you do? I'm, um, I, I, I'm a sort of like, uh... I used You're to doing the um thing that we talked about. I'm doing the um thing. I'm having a brain thing. fart here. It's very hard for me to tell people what I do. I, I'm very... I think the word for it is eclectic. I do heaps of little things. Yeah. Yeah, I, when I was a kid, I wanted to be an artist. Mm -hmm. And I never actually... I wanted to be a Houston, I wanted to be a magician, and I wanted to be an artist, and I, I started drawing paint, uh, painting and all that kind of stuff, and I submitted it to a few galleries, but no one would take my work because it's just too amateurish. Yeah. So I wanted to be a comedian, but I never actually got to that stage, so I was, I was afraid people would laugh at me. Yeah. And then I wanted to be a... <laughs> there you go! <laughs> it took a while, dude! <laughs> How, how long are you here for? In a, you're here for a while in Australia, yeah? yeah you live in Bondi? Yeah, for okay, a little bit. Right. I, I live in Kuti. I'm actually... I think we should uh, do something next week. How do you spell your name? Um, Sheena. S-H-E-E-N-A. S-H-E-E-N-A. Okay. Uh, into, your, into your digits, I'll SMS you. Okay. Some details, which should definitely... Um, you take on me. Awesome. So, uh, you seem like you seem like a pretty fun girl. Thanks. Have you ever been to Opera Bar before? No, I actually haven't. I've heard good things about it though. There's some really cool places there. Yeah, yeah. it's um, Opera Bar. It's this really kind of moment. It's actually just around the block here. Do you want to, do you want to join me? We'll have a quick uh, drink. Yeah, sure. I'm waiting for friends, but I'm I'm here for sure. half an hour anyway. Okay. So. okay. Are you carrying an umbrella? And well, it was raining on my way here, so the, the weather's been pretty un unpredictable. <laughs> It's like a, a Maxwell Australia. Smart umbrella. I like it. It's very nice. <laughs> There's a museum up here. They do the old... Um, Is that the one that... Yeah, police museum. Yeah. And they have, back in the 1920s, they had these the canes. A lot of people, a lot of gangsters and mafia bosses walk around with canes, which come out and turn out to be knives and sticks and nunchucks and ninja stars and all that kind of stuff. And they... It's really strange, and the weapons they used in the 1920s, and they had these old little cells where they held this, this name, I forgot this girl's name, Agatha or something, but she was one of Sydney's notorious crime bosses, and it was a girl. Really? Yeah. Whoa. Still not used to the driving on the other side of the road thing yet. Well, that guy isn't used to it either, yeah. <laughs> 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 they just oh. hit. <laughs> yeah. Look at the umbrella. Yeah. Well, 
What side do you drive um, on the uh, in Canada? On the opposite side. Ah, interesting. Interesting. Kids, Thanks anyway. for the drink. It's, right. it's uh, red back beer. They uh, put a lemon in it. I've never seen that before. Are you serious? I say, no. It's only beer I know they put, because um, it's, um, it's a reason for that. That you, you can't remember? Or? I can't remember. Maybe it's just too bitter and they need a bit of sweetness in the sour or something. <laughs> I don't know. That's right. It's a honey beer. It's, it's a honey beer. It's a honey oh, beer. Okay. It's based on honey. Mm. Sort of like um, a hefeweizen. I don't know if you have those here. Like a wheat beer. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's it, yeah. We put a lemon in it as well. You go to German bars, they have those there mm. as well. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Mm. It's lovely. I've never been here before. Have you? Yeah. It's a really nice place. You come here Friday and Saturday nights, and mm. it's just uh, it's packed full of people. Really? Yeah. It's, oh, it's just inside the dinner. Yeah, no, it's, yeah. it's decent. Like, the, I came here last weekend, and I was here with, uh, I was on a 21st birthday party, and there's just, um, it's a totally different vibe. You know how you go to some bars, and just some people are just really, some pretentious bars, where everyone's wearing suits and ties, and mm. you just yeah, don't like blend in at all. Then you go to some bars where much, much younger people, and then uh, everyone's just more friendly. And yeah, chilled out. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. That's, that's the aim. Yeah. One thing I do like about Australia is that, like, the pub lifestyle, like we don't really have pubs in Canada, it's either a restaurant or a nightclub. Oh really? Yeah, so it's like, it's just a nice in-between where you can... Actually talk? Actually talk, go in your jeans and thongs and you're, you know, cool. Interesting. So dance clubs over there, you just like, are super loud and you just can't talk at all? Or restaurants. That's lounges. Been... You do, we have lounges, but still it's food and drinks, very, very overpriced cocktails. Oh really? Yeah. Don't have a That's insane. We have a couple Irish pubs in uh, Vancouver. Yeah. But the, the cocktails they have over there, is it two shots or is it more? Two our, shots. Is it? Because yeah. our shots over here are really tiny. Are they? Well, that's what they say. I think it's a pretty standard, like, it's 30 mils or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting, because I, I mean, I used to work in bars mm. um, a couple of years ago, and they had, uh, yeah, we had an adventure yeah. Americans and Canadians come in, and they said, oh, ha what is that? Because it's like a, a small little shot, cup glass. They're like, that's not 30, that's, sorry, that's not your meals, is it? I'm like, yeah, it's a, that's one shot. It's like eight bucks, and they're like, is that all? Really? Is that all I get? <laughs> it's hardly anything. Well, we, I think it is, in the States and America, everything is like supersized. So that, I mean, that is possible. Yeah. It is smaller here. Yeah, it sucks that. I've heard that. Yeah. Everyone, it's like, yeah, it's like an epidemic over there. Everyone's getting larger quantities. and. It is an epidemic. There's so many overweight. I guess more in the States than it is in Canada, but yeah. because we're pretty much, well, not exactly the same, but very similar. I see it becoming a problem as well in Canada, yeah. for sure. Is there constantly, like, bickering between Americans and Canadians, like, boys party and um, stuff? I think that Canadians are very laid back. We have an attitude of, we don't really like to get involved in what the States does. We know yeah. that we're, you know, similar to them, and we sort of live in their pocket, I guess, is the... I'm surprised you admit to that. Say, no, we <laughs> yeah. don't fully. We yeah. do. But for the most part, I think that Canadians find Americans very pompous and very yeah. just so into themselves. Yeah. They, uh, um, working in Vancouver, we're right on the, the border of the Canadian-American border. And you get a lot of people coming in from Washington State. And um, they think that we still live in igloos. Like, there are parts of... They live like in what? Igloos. You live in igloos? don't actually think that we have cities and yeah. <laughs> universities and that. Very narrow-minded. Well, that's what I say. A lot of people come here. They expect koalas and kangaroos to jump down the absolutely. street. You know, I asked somebody about that. And actually, during the Olympics, I was helping out at the stadiums. I was just assisting with a, a few things. People would walk up to me and say, "Hey, do you, do you speak Australian?" I'm like, "What the hell? What's this person like, man? I want some." You know, it's like it's insane. But people actually think that there's kangaroos and koalas hanging off the, the mm. Harbour Bridge. So. To, yeah, I think it's just because you're so far away from everything else mm. that we just don't really hear a lot about Australia. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. So, what are, I mean, obviously you're very attractive and you, you know, you got musket guys <laughs> cracking you. on to you all, all the time. I mean, what are three qualities about you that just make you different from everyone else? Because um, I can sense you're, you're, you're creative. Creative personality. Very free-spirited. Oh, yeah? And quite adventurous. 
I, I, I do actually mattress. think that. Yeah. <laughs> I was kidding before, but. I, I like you I like the Chinese things. I love to meet new people. Mm -hmm. um, and I like to get outside of myself. I don't like to be comfortable. I think that's the only way you can learn. That's it. To get outside of yourself. And that's what they say about comfort zones. You know, you only get you only start having fun um, and learning stuff when you start pushing your comfort zone. Yeah. Yeah. So when you sure. um do some crazy stuff or stuff you've never done before, you're like, wow, it's actually quite easy to do this. And then it's when you start having fun, you know. You, you know your limits. Well. Yeah. Like you know what you can, you're capable of doing, which is amazing. It's an amazing feeling. Um, and which is why, I, like, I moved out when I was 17 and moved to the other side of the country by myself. And really? Yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Who, who did you stay with on the other side? Did you have friends I had and stuff? friends. I had friends. That's cool. It's good to have support. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's so difficult when you move out, especially at that age where you're still learning and being, being shaped as a human being. But yeah. at the same time, it happens you up. And um, I found that I, once I traveled, I realized that I grew up in a very, in a big bubble. Mm. And getting outside of that was probably one of the best things I've done so far. And yeah. no complaints at all about choices or... Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Sure. Good stuff. Are you traveling by yourself or with somebody? No, no. I'm traveling with two girlfriends. Sweet. Yep. Let's do that. That's it. Okay. Haven't really known them for a super long time, but. Well, how'd you, how'd you meet them? We were, were all working at the same restaurant in Vancouver together. Oh, really? You decided yeah. to come over here and just travel together? Yeah. Okay. That's pretty funky. Yeah. It was just an amazing decision. It was very last minute, and so I packed up my whole apartment, gave everything I owned away, and. I just sell on eBay. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, that's what I, I tried to sell something on eBay the other day, and what was it? It was, um, it was my, my old uh, CD collection. Mm. So I, I used to listen to a lot. Actually, I, I used to come here a lot, the Opera House. I used to um, watch a lot of shows here. I used to actually really be into classical music and watch a lot of opera and stuff. But because my sisters, they used to do the same sort of thing, you know. And um, I used to, I just I had all this collection of all these CDs. And Anyhow, so um, what's the longest relationship you've ever been in? Um, three years. Wow, gee. Yeah. How was that, what was that like? Oh. It was amazing. <laughs> I, I love being in a relationship yeah. with it, when it's with a good person. But uh, okay. everything comes to an end in that life, so you? Yeah, um, it's probably about six months. Mm -hmm. Six months <laughs> to about a year. Well, six months to about a year is probably it, yeah. Usually I, because uh, I, I travel quite a bit, so I don't really have much time in one place. Anyhow, I've got something to to admit to you. Where um, I didn't actually let you in what I what I do for a living. Remember, no. I was humming and arming and having little brain farts in my head. Basically, I, I'm a, I'm an amateur filmmaker. I'm making a documentary on uh, the dating scene in Sydney. Uh huh. And I mean, let me ask you a question. Have you ever seen a guy you're attracted to, but you, he was kind of too shy and didn't have much confidence, so he didn't, he didn't approach you? Yeah. Sure, of course. And you wish he did approach you? Yeah, okay. sure. Well, I mean, that's that's what we're filming about. We're making a film right now, and we see my friend up there. He's actually filming us right now. He's having a little wave. And, uh... <laughs> and Are you serious? Yeah, no, it's, it's fun. We're uh, making a, a film and teaching people just to have normal conversations, just like what we had there. Do you mind us using the footage that we filmed? Um... I, no, I guess not. I yeah, it's fun. There you go. High five. Way to go. <laughs> like you guys can really help get, learn from this, you know? Hey, guys. Hey, buddy. Hey. <laughs> right, so Hi, what, what did you think of my approach, generally? Um, it was very friendly. Very okay. forward. Very outgoing. Yeah. Well, obviously, I mean, you're very attractive. You must... I mean, I had to walk up and say something, you know? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> And, but, and what made you continue the conversation with young Alex? Um, it was, it, you're interesting. Um, it just kept the conversation going and kept me engaged, which there was no awkward pauses. So just having stuff to say and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah. Um, not really approaching it as a, a perspective date, more just two friends chatting. So, just really nice. I think that's good. If you treat somebody like a friend, then they'll just assume that role and then they'll start being right, a friend. Yeah. If you if you make it awkward, like I'm sitting like this and doing this, and it sort of makes it trying too hard now. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So it was very comfortable. Do, do you think guys could really benefit from learning this kind of stuff? Um, I do think so. I hope so. Just learning to treat women in a certain way and a certain mm. amount of respect and coming up to them and talking to them and 
and being genuine, being sincere, being, being honest about it. Yeah. Yeah, all of those things. Of course, I think that, especially men, you know, mm. maybe they need to start figuring things out. Yeah, yeah. For sure, guidance. Cool. Yeah. Right. Well, thanks. Thank you. <laughs>